Jackson Lindsay. I'm the pastor of the youth here at the fellowship. It is so good to see you all. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Um, today, we're going to be talking about deliverance or development. Deliverance or development. It's a very fun message to talk about today. Very excited. Very excited. So I have a question for you. If you had to choose, which would you rather have? Deliverance or development? Would you rather be delivered or would you rather be developed? A lot of people started off saying developed very quickly. And then you have the critical thinkers that go, well, if I can have both, I'll take both, please. We're going to talk about, uh, about that in that process. And so we're going to start off looking at uh, Joseph and his life, and then we'll move on to talk about other things. Um, for those of you that do not know the story of Joseph, this is the individual with the coat of many colors, loved by his father, had many brothers, and was hated by his brothers, well, most of them at least, because of a dream that the Lord gave him, a dream that his brothers would eventually bow down to him, and then eventually his mother and father would also bow down to him as well. And I always wondered why Joseph shared those dreams with his brothers and sisters. I think it was because he was so excited what the Lord gave him, and he wanted them to partake. But you're walking up to somebody and going, you're going to bow down to me one day. (laughs) And I wondered if he was surprised with the hatred that was uh, sent his way, Or if it was kind of like, well, yeah, I probably should have kept my mouth shut. But his life was characterized with many trials, many things that he had to go through. The very first one being his own family turning against him. And they threw him into a a well, into a pit, and by the grace of God was sold into slavery. What a sentence. By the grace of God, he was sold as a slave. Wow. Wow was not murdered, was not killed, but instead was placed into Egypt. And Egypt was a very specific place that Joseph went to. He could have gone anywhere in the country, but the Lord wanted him to go to Egypt. It was a, it was a predetermined location for him. And what he experienced there was also predetermined. As he gets to Egypt, he's sold into slavery. He begins to work and the Lord says in, that he increased him in success. It was the Lord that gave him success and he rose in the ranks and became the right-hand man of Potiphar. And then Potiphar's wife tempts him. He does not fall into it. He, he runs out of his clothes almost, leaves, and she has the evidence saying something took place, but it did not. Lied on him. He got thrown in jail. And while he's in jail, two people in jail, the cupbearer and the baker, both have dreams. And I've always wondered if Joseph was a little timid to mess with dreams again. That's what started the whole process in the first place. But the Lord gives him the interpretations of those two dreams. One says, in three days' time, you're going to be reestablished. And then looks at the other and says, and you're going to be dead. I mean, what an interpretation. And it comes to pass. And then the cupbearer leaves and goes back, gets fully established. The baker is is killed. And he grabs the cupbearer and says, remember me. Remember me. Two years later, he remembers him. Sits in jail for a whole long time. And I've always wondered, what was he doing in there? Well, the Bible says that he once again rose in success, even in jail. The guards started to love him and to tend to him. And he started making decisions. And I've seen movies like that where the uh, inmates start to do well and they're starting to make calls and telling the guards what to do and they've got special pull and some of the guards are even afraid of some of these inmates. But in this case, it was the Lord that rose him. Everywhere that he went, the Lord blessed him. Even though he's going through very, 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 very hard, difficult trials, the Lord was always there. And I think what sustained him throughout his entire process was the dream that was given to him. His parents and his brothers had not bowed down to him yet. So I can continue. Even though I'm in jail, I still have the promise that you gave me as a child. And he's able to continue and continue and push on and worship the Lord and serve him in every area of his life. Then getting up to the, uh, the, the interpretation of Pharaoh. 
the man that is in charge of everything comes before him, gives him the interpretation, and Pharaoh says, you know what, there's something special about you. I want you to be my right-hand man. So he started from the pit of a well and is now risen to the second highest person in power over the entire earth, essentially. The Lord brought him from the depths of the earth to the highest place that, you, that, that people had to offer to give at that point. And the Lord used him to bless his family. You know the story, the famine that took place. Everyone around the world was experiencing great hardships. And Joseph's family comes to Egypt. And the, there's a whole lot that's involved in that. I don't have time to get into all of that. But his family comes and then they stay in Egypt. He brings his father, his mother, everyone moves. They live in Egypt. Joseph secures some land for them, and they're all planted in Egypt. And that's important because all of the hardships that Joseph went through was to set up the Israelites being in Egypt. Because you know the story after that, after they're in Egypt, eventually time goes on. People forget about Joseph and who he was. The Israelites begin to multiply. They are huge in the land. And Pharaoh says, you know what? We've got a large workforce here. We're going to grab these people. We're going to get them to work. We're going to enslave them because they're so large they might overthrow us. So instead, he gets them together. He makes them his slaves, and they start working. The Lord never forgot them. The Lord sent Moses to come and get them out. The Israelites watched it through the plagues, all 12 plagues, brings them out into the desert for 40 years, brings them to the promised land. They're not obedient. He says, ah, here's another 40 years. Go walk around some more. But he pulls them out of Egypt and it's all for a purpose. You see, Joseph brought the Israelites to Egypt, and then Moses brought them out. Wasn't there somebody else that went to Egypt and then came out of Egypt? Yes. Yes, there was. In Hosea chapter 1, verse 1, Hosea says, When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. In Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 15, Matthew writes, Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. The difficulties that Joseph experienced throughout his life, yes, they were great and they were many, but it was to set up something in the future. You see, the Lord has plans for you, and most of them are going to be difficult and tough. Most of them are not going to be super easy. But if it's the Lord's plan for your life, take it. Run with it. Lean into it. Don't pray for deliverance when the Lord is the one that's put you there. I can't tell you how many times as a coach, when I was coaching tennis, I would put my tennis players in difficult situations during practice, and they hated it. They would revolt against the, the drills that I'm running. I don't want to do this. It's too hard. It's too tough. It's hot out here. I, I don't care. I'm making you into a competitor. Close your mouth and get back out on the court. Come on. You can't have these excuses when the game day comes up. When you're competing against an opponent, you can't say, it's too hot, he's too good, I just want to win, give me a trophy. That's not how it works. So what do we do? We get into practice. I put them in very difficult positions. It would be, it would be something similar, because I know not a lot of people understand tennis, so I can't really talk a whole lot about the scoring, but let's just say we're talking about football. And it would be like looking at my football team and saying, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to play an entire football game but you're going to start the game off 0 to 40. The other team has 40 points. And we're going to start that way. All right? And then at the end of the game, if you don't win, there will be a punishment. You are going to have to run five miles. So you can imagine most of my tennis players are very upset at this point. What are you talking about? But I was trying to, to show them that when the day comes, there is going to be a day where you're going to be behind the eight ball, so to speak, and you need to have that strength internally to press on. Joseph had it. Jesus experienced it his entire life. You will experience it as well. I had one tennis player and his sister 
that were playing in the district tournament. They were down um, in the first set, 0-5. And if you know anything about tennis, if they get one more game, then they lose that set and they got to go into a second set. Um, so they lost the first set. They went down 0-6. And that's when I showed up. And I walked up and I tried to coach them a little bit. And they did okay. You know, kind of like, you know, uh, sure, I just don't think I can do it. I left, talked to some other people, came back. They were now down 0-5 in the second set. They are like on the edge, on the verge of losing. So I walk up and, and I, I get the score, right? I'm like, what's the score, guys? Oh, we're down, coach. How bad? They didn't want to say. They told me. And I was like, oh, that is bad. And I'm, I'm searching through all my bag of tricks. What can I give somebody that's on the verge of defeat? What can I tell them? You know, I don't know. And so I'm like, Lord, I, I don't know what to say. And he told me what to say. I won't share it, but I pulled the boy aside and I spoke directly to him and basically gave him all that he needed to go through and lead them to victory. And they ended up winning 7-5 and then 10-3 in the tiebreaker. They came back all the way from the brink and pulled it out. When I asked him... About it later, I said, you know, was it the words that I said? He goes, not really. <laughs> I said, okay, well, that's good. I mean, <laughs> that's fine. I said, what was it? He said, well, you had talked about internal strength, and that keyed me in. That was the first thing that I said, and I stopped listening because I remembered the practice that you had us do where you started us down. You started us in the hole. And I remembered that, and that's what got me through it. I knew I could do it because I did it in practice. I've done it before, and then now I was able to do it again. The Israelites didn't seem to have that same inner strength when they were in the wilderness. It seemed like every single thing they came to, it was, God, help us, God, help us. And he would. And you would think that people would learn that after a time. When they come to the promised land and they see the giants, you would think they would say, God, help us. But instead they said, let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back to slavery. I mean, I'm amazed that the Lord led them with a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire through the wilderness. I mean, they can see him. He's right there. There's some of us in this room today that would say, I would love to be able to just see him. He lives inside us now, so that's even better. But, I mean, you can point to it. That's him. He's right there. And where that moves, we move. When that stays, we stay. When they're hungry, he gave them food. When they were thirsty, he gave them water. When they were being attacked by serpents, he healed them. I mean, it's like every time they cried for deliverance, he delivered them. But they didn't get the next part, the, the, the development aspect of it. There was no internalization of what the Lord was doing. It was just, a, I'm living my life, and when I run into issues, Jesus, help me out. I mean, Moses was being developed. He was spending time with the Lord. And that's where the development comes from. It's the waiting on the Lord. It's the spending time with Him. The little things that happen in your life, they're going to continue happening. The big things that happen, they're going to continue happening. We went to a graduation on Friday, and they were talking about this class that's graduating. When they were freshmen, they uh, ran into Hurricane Harvey, and then they had a global pandemic. And it's like, wow, all the things that they've had to experience and that stuff's going to continue. I mean, India is suffering with crazy amounts of uh, COVID issues. And then they had a cyclone. And I mean, the Philippines have experienced tsunamis. And it's like the earth is going to continue throwing stuff at us that we can't handle. Right? That's not going to stop. But where we need to be is we need to be pressing in to the Lord. This right here, this is where we get our strength from. This is not... A Bible, this is, my Bible's name is Jesus. And when I read this, I'm meeting Him. When I sit and I glean from this, I'm learning Him. I'm spending time with Him. Our relationship is strengthening. I had a very crazy week this week. And the stuff that I did this week, the stuff that I was able to accomplish, I would not have been able to accomplish a year ago. And I recognize that. And I'm going, Lord, you're developing me. You're giving me strength. But it hasn't come from some seminar that I attended. It hasn't come from just spending more time in the gym and my body is just, you know, I can shoulder a lot now. No, it came from quiet time. It came from sitting in a room by myself, keeping my mouth shut 
and saying, Lord, search me, remove from me the things that you don't want there and deposit the things that you want to. We sang that today. Search me, fill me with your your love, with your peace, with your joy. All of those things, your kindness, your self-control, remove from me those things that need to go. That's the development. That's the development process. And, you know, Jesus spent his entire life being developed. And that really is amazing because he's the son of God. He is God. And yet he still subjected himself to the trials of this life. We read in the bulletin reading today, Paul and all the things that he went through. Well, Jesus went through a lot as well. And it came to the end of his life. He had been protected by the Lord the entire time he was here on the earth. Herod wanted to kill him. God said, nope. Yeet, going to Egypt. They wanted to throw him off a cliff. Couldn't do that. He just walked through everybody. And when they came to finally get him, Peter even tried to step in and stop that. And Jesus said, no, no, no. You know, this is the Lord's will. This is what he wants for me. And he walked into major suffering for us. Spent his entire life protected. And then when it came time to it, he said, I'm going to lean into this because this is what the Lord wants. And he asked to be delivered three times. The Bible says, please take this cup from me. It wasn't necessarily the suffering he was afraid of. It was the separation that he was going to have with the Father. But he asked, is there any other way? I don't want to go through that suffering, the physical suffering I will bear, but I don't want to leave you. My time with you for all eternity has been so amazing. My time here on earth with you has been even more amazing. You know, he would, the Bible says he would, uh, he would pull away from the group and spend time with the Lord. And now he's going to a place where they're going to be separated. They're not going to be together. And yet he said, your will be done. And for you and for me, he stepped into those things. And the Lord developed him, created put him into, made him the most powerful being in the entire universe. All God, all man, sitting on the throne, in heaven, governing all things. All things were placed into his hand, and look what he had to go through. This message for you today is, yes, we would all like to be delivered, absolutely. But sometimes the Lord's will for us is to not be delivered, but instead to go through the things that we're looking at. The Israelites went through the Red Sea. They didn't go around it. Their back's against the wall. They cried out, help us. And the Lord said, I got your back. Boom. Now start walking. Took care of the enemies. Amazing. And for some of you, that might be your case. You might feel like your back is against the wall. It, not, not all suffering in this life is just a... Um, coincidence some things are orchestrated by the lord he brought joseph into egypt to later say i took jesus into egypt and brought him out of egypt as well i mean that was hundreds of years hundreds and hundreds of years later the lord was setting up something so that way no one could just say oh it was a coincidence no and you could very well be in a situation right now in your life where the lord is doing something for you in you through you for someone years to come the things that he has you to do now may not be for now. They may be for 10, 15, 20 years later. Miss Marva was a school teacher. I was a school teacher. And we know that as teachers, a lot of times what we do in that moment with those students, we don't see the fruit of it until many years later. They'll come back and say, you know, I was a real knucklehead in your class and I know I kept you up at night and I know that I was a problem and I know that like you constantly had to get on me and many phone calls home to my parents, but I just want to thank you because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I mean, that's, that's something that I don't know if you've ever prayed it, but I have definitely prayed, Lord, remove this kid from my class. <laughs> Lord at this side. That's right. Oh my goodness. And I remember one in particular that really just, mm, that was a tough one. But by the end of the year, the last day of class, I said, hey man, I'll see you later. He said, I'll see you later. And he turned and he looked at me and he said, dad,
And I didn't, I didn't give him words. I didn't have any words from the Lord for him throughout the year. I didn't do anything special. I didn't pray for him and, you know, his, his leg grew back or something. Like, nothing weird like that. But instead, I just decided, Lord, I'm going to love this kid like he's my own kid. I'm going to discipline him the same way, too. I mean, there were some rules and things I couldn't, you know, grab the desk, boy. I couldn't, couldn't do that. But just that love, right? And the every day showing up. And it taught me. It, it helped me. You know, while he's being changed, I'm being changed. While he's being ministered to, I'm being ministered to. And so these thorns that we have, they keep us on our knees. They keep us closer to the Lord. And if you've ever said, well, I just don't feel him. Maybe you haven't lived enough. Maybe you haven't put yourself out there enough. Because what keeps me coming back now is the love that I have for him and the love he has for me. But early on, what kept me close to him was because I was like a little child trying to walk and getting ready to fall. So the hand comes out and he grabs my hand and stabilizes me. All right. Thank you. Okay, now let go because I got this. (laughs) So don't be afraid of the things that, that, that come your way. Don't be afraid of the things the Lord puts in front of you. There are things that, that we do need to be delivered from. The Israelites did have things that they asked for deliverance, and the Lord delivered them because they were the enemy coming against them. And so it is a very fine line that we have to walk. Lord, are you doing this, or is this an attack of the enemy? So not everything is the devil, You know, there are some people that it's like, it's hot in here. I rebuke that thermometer in the name of Jesus. (laughs) You have legs, go turn it up, you know. (laughs) So not everything is like that, right? But there are some things. And sometimes the Lord will close doors to prevent us from going somewhere. And you could be resisting the will of the Lord, trying to push through, make something happen. Sometimes it can be the enemy. And so what I like to do is when things come, I do like what Jesus did. I pray, Lord, if you can remove this from my life, Please, but if not, your will be done. And that's the development. That's the key is that Jesus puts us in situations. And as long as we will wait on him, we will see those things that he has promised us. In Isaiah chapter 40, verses 29 through 31, it says, He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 11 through 12 says, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see an almond branch. And the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. Luke chapter 3, verse 15 says, As the people were in expectation and were all questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Christ, they were looking for Jesus. They wanted their Messiah. They were expectant. For his coming. And then in Psalms chapter 25, verse 5, it says, Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I will wait all the day long. Your development comes in the waiting. If you feel like you're in a place where you're not movement, you're not moving, you feel stagnant, that's a good place to be. That's the growth. That's the place where the Lord is molding you into what he has made you to be. Don't be afraid to wait. Don't be afraid to stand still. The Lord will move in time, His time. 2 Peter says that He is not slow to fulfill His promises. We all think it's slow because that's we want everything like this. But He'll do it in due time. Trust Him. Spend time with Him. Trust the process. And don't be afraid of that things come against you because the Lord is strong. The Lord is mighty and his hand is able to save and pluck you from any of your peril. But if he leaves you there, he's refining you. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much for being here this morning. We love you. Have a great day.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. A good word. You know, I think that all of us here, we, we understand that word. Amen. We understand it. And so I want us to just reflect just now on the word of God that's been given to us. I know that uh, in my life, I've always wanted uh, deliverance. I mean, that's, that's me. And of course, you know, as uh, uh, Pastor Jackson referred to Paul, uh, Paul wanted that thorn removed prayed fervently three times and I believe that uh, that there's somebody in here today like that prayed Lord remove this remove this he says my grace is sufficient for you my strength is made perfect in weakness this is amazing Joseph being such a great example going through all kinds of hardships sometimes we we feel like I, I want the absence of hardship I don't want hardship I want the absence of it. Uh, I, I want it over. But God is doing something in your life that you, that you need. He is giving you more of himself. Uh, I love the scripture he quoted. I, I don't mean to preach his message again. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk. And they won't faint. That's what God is doing. That's what God is doing in all of our lives. In one way or the other. And sometimes we fight the process so much. I know we do. I, I, his analogy, yeah, it's too hot. So we've learned to rebuke the, the uh, thermometer. And we're always rebuking things. Rather than saying, God, is this for me? Do I need to go through this? Oh, no. A young man said to me a number of years ago, he said he didn't agree with me at all because he was saying God doesn't want his people to suffer. It's nowhere in the Bible God wants his people to suffer. He was wondering what Bible was he reading? That's what this is about. Through many tribulations we enter the kingdom of God. What a timely message for all of us. And I want us, those of us who need to recalibrate, I want you to recalibrate this morning. Just allow the Holy Spirit to, to minister to you. Just allow the Holy Spirit right now to minister to you. And those of you who don't know Jesus, you need to know Jesus. You really need to come to a place where you can yield yourself to Jesus. All that we are doing here today is about Jesus Christ. It's not about trying to get over in this world system. So it's about coming to faith in God through Jesus Christ. And so I want us to do that today. Just reflect today. Maybe you're already a believer and you say, well, I'm a believer, Pastor. But are, what are you believing? Are you really believing God is going to make you into something more powerful? Uh, God's going to work in your life and cause you to be strong and a good representation of who he is? That's what God wants. God doesn't just want you to be just somebody who is... On a, a going to a church on a church pew, I was going to say, on a church seat. He wants you to be a, a good representation, a representer, a representation of who he is. Are you like that? Can you surely say, that's who I am? That's who I am. Can you say that? No, you can't. Maybe you can't. Maybe others can. But what if you're here today and you say, well, I don't know Jesus Christ. This service is for you. This service is for you. A few weeks ago, somebody came to church. They came here. It was the first time in a long time they'd gone to church. They were invited. And from the very beginning, everything happened perfectly. I don't want to give you too much information. I don't want to give the person's identity away. But the same, Pastor Jackson stood up and said some things. The person go, hmm, our bulletin article, hmm. And the message that day was perfectly about his situation. And he left saying this whole service, he gave his heart to the Lord. 
when I asked if you want to be saved, raise your hand. And he later stated that his hand shot up. He thought it shot up on his own. He says, shut up. And he, he, was, he did not come for that. He came because a friend invited him. If that's you today, if you've, if you've come today and you want Jesus to come into your heart, you want to be a different person, you want to be a different person, I want you to raise your hand. Say, I, I want to give my heart to Jesus Christ today. I want you to raise your hand if that is you today. If there's somebody online, you can raise your hand right in the chat. I gave, I gave my heart to Jesus. Maybe you're here today and you've, you've been one of those persons. You rebuke everything. You rebuke all of God's attempts at developing you. You rebuke them. You always think they're from the devil. You know who you are. Maybe you don't want to raise your hand, but maybe you can just say, that's me, Lord. That's me. That's me. That's me. That has been me in my life. That has been me in my life. So I want to pray for you. For those of you who are online, firstly, we're going to just read the scripture that says that if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart one believes to righteousness and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. For the scripture says whoever believes in him will not be put to shame and so God will never put you to shame but he'll save you, make you a new creation. This is what God will do for you. This is what God wants for you. Those of you who have cried out for development, you're in a good place. But those of you who have cried out for deliverance, just deliverance, just deliverance, just deliverance. I want to pray for you because God doesn't want to deliver you without developing you. God wants to deliver you through your development. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, I pray for your people. These are your people. They're the sheep of your pasture, and I believe they want you. So I'm asking you today to minister to them and take them through the process of keeping the thorn in the side but having the blessing, having the memory of being in the pit being in jail, falsely accused, but having been so developed that you made him the second most powerful man in Egypt and thus in many regards the whole world. Amazing. Do that for somebody here today. Somebody who is not comfortable with remaining the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a big hand. Thank you, Pastor Jackson.